Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris, back again with The Ancient Scholar. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue along the uh, lines of uh, shielding and screening, and I just kind of emphasized on the last video that, that look, a, a one electron atom, like a hydrogen atom, or maybe a helium plus, or lithium uh, plus two, uh, beryllium plus three, um, so on and so forth, a one electron atom doesn't have this concept of screening because there's just one electron, right? And if that electron is in the uh, 2s state, or uh, the, not the 2s state, I, I apologize, if that electron is in uh, n equals 2, so this second shell or second level of energy, it does, doesn't really matter if that electron is in, say, the 2s or the 2p state, or the 3s or the 3p or the 3d state, uh, because in that situation, those energy levels are all the same. In a one electron atom, the only thing that matters is the quantum number n. n equals one, two, three, four. That's energy. But when we start adding multiple electrons into the mix, now we have electron um, repulsion. And we have this concept of screening where some electrons aren't necessarily uh, experiencing um, the full uh, attractive force of the nucleus because there is... Um, there's some repulsion going on. In that case, what we get is we generally, our s orbitals are going to uh, be at lower energies than, say, the p orbitals. Okay? So that means that the s orbital is going to feel more of the attractive force, of the Coulombic force, the nucleus, than, say, the p or the d orbitals even though they're in the same shell, they're in the same energy level. And I'm going to go ahead and show you why. So, first thing I'm going to put up here is I'm just going to put up a graph and I want to just describe what it is. So it's going to look kind of like this. Okay? And what I'm going to do is we're just going to do it for the 1s electron, or electron in a 1s state. So that would be uh, quantum numbers uh, 1, 0, 0, plus 1 half. Doesn't really even matter at this point uh, because we're talking about a hydrogen atom. So 1, 0, 0 in the 1s state. And what I'm going to have here is I am going to have distance from the nucleus, okay, over here. Uh, we also call that R. On some uh, graphs, you may say you may actually have increments of a sub naught. If you remember, a sub naught is what's known as the Bohr radius. It's about 0 0.53 angstrom. Angstroms, excuse me. So uh, just a little over half an angstrom. Now, if I were to graph, uh, so oh, before, sorry about that. Let me tell you what the other part is. So this other part here is probability density. Okay, so I'm not saying that it that the the electron is anywhere. I'm just saying that if my graph is higher, that's more probability density. So it's the probability that the electron is going to be in a certain area is higher, but it's not deterministically saying that the electron will be there. It's just more probability per unit volume. That's all. So if I were to go ahead and look at the 1s state, I would have something that uh, kind of looks sort of like uh, this. And as we know that this will never go to zero, right? This will never go to zero because uh, the electron could possibly, even if it's in a certain atom here on Earth, it could possibly be floating around Saturn or Jupiter or, or Titan or, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be bound to the nucleus or what is bound to the nucleus but doesn't have to necessarily be anywhere near the nucleus of the atom and so that electron could uh, presumably be anywhere even though the probability of that is exceedingly low. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so what we have here is we have, and I'm just going to make a line here, and I'm going to say that line is a um, sub-null. That's a Bohr radius. 
So what this is telling me is that the most probable radius is about a sub naught, about half an angstrom from the nucleus in a 1s orbital, okay? So the 1s state is very close to the nucleus. So that's how my graphs are going to look. Let's kind of go and get into the point of this whole, this whole conversation. And really the point is, why do certain orbitals um, have screening and certain orbitals don't? So what I'm going to do is that now I'm going to go into n equals 4. Okay, the fourth energy level, the fourth shell, and I'm going to have a multi-electron um, atom. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph out the probability density of the orbital. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the 4s orbital first. And it's going to look kind of like this. Okay, kind of like this, all right? And, and we know that you have three nodes here, right? This is 4s, and I have three radial nodes of zero probability density. So you can see that the, the maximum probability density, um, the, the most probable radius, is going to be way out here. But I want you to just look right here and notice that even in the 4s state, there's a tiny little bit of probability density that is near the nucleus. So you can imagine the nucleus being here and the probability density. But there is not very high, but there's still a little bit. Okay, now let's look at the 4p electron and we'll make that blue. All right, so it's gonna look something kind of like this if everybody can see. Okay, 4p has nodes as well, right? Instead of having a radial nodes, we, we, we actually um, <clears throat> we have some angular modes, nodes because it has some angular momentum, but it's not really important. Okay, so there's my 4p probability density, okay? And let's go ahead and do 4d, and we'll do 4d in red. All right. And my 4d is gonna look something kind of like this. All right, and in, in each case, we can say that the nucleus is right here. What do you notice here? What do you notice? Even though this is all n equals 4, something rather interesting is going on here. And it should be very evident what's going on here, that I have this very small little bump here, but it's still there. And what that is, is if you compare this to the other orbitals, it should be very clear that an electron in an s orbital has probability density much closer to the nucleus. It's not a whole lot of probability density, but if you compare it to the 4p and the 4d states, there's definitely a significant amount of probability density um, of probability of being closer to the nucleus in the 4s state. So if I have a multi-electron atom, and I have an electron here, an electron here, and an electron here, which electron can penetrate, can get closer to the nucleus? Well, it's going to be this electron here in the 4s state, right? Because its probability density is closer to the nucleus. So if there's a chance that it can spend more time by the nucleus, it's going to feel more of the nuclear charge, more of what we call that Z-effective. So these can penetrate, these orb 4s orbitals can penetrate closer to the nucleus so they feel stronger attraction and the, the uh, repulsion, the screening, doesn't affect these as much. So if you remember the last video, that's how I, um, I showed you that the 4p, or uh, actually I think it was 2p, uh, 2p um, electron was higher energy because it didn't feel there was less attraction because there was less probability density closer to the nucleus. Okay, so s orbitals. 2s, 3s, 4s, whatever, can penetrate closer to the nucleus 
than p than say uh, a p orbital or a d orbital in the same shell. So because of that, the s electrons in s orbitals feel much more of the nuclear charge, and they're not as affected by this concept of screening. And that's where you get your p and d orbitals having higher energy levels in in, in many cases than electrons in s orbitals in multi-electron atoms. Okay guys, hopefully that made some sense and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Take care.